Now it's BBG chapter 14, sentence 2. This one should text your brain a little bit less than sentence 1 did, uh, hopefully. So let's uh, start working through it. Uh, he gives you the verb, which uh, incorporates the subject. They believe. Uh, they believed. And then you have um, two, two objects here. So you're going to look at uh, te grafe kai to lago, uh, in which case the writing or scripture and the word. Now you're wondering why I'm not using the dative uh, keyword. And the reason is because that um, in, in Greek there is what's called a collocation rule. Let me um, spell that out for you. Collocation is um, the way that languages fit words, certain kinds of words together with certain other kinds of words. Uh, for example, in English we yell at someone. In Russian you yell on someone. Uh, and there are a number of... Um, things if you happen to be a person who speaks another language you, you know that you have to sort of memorize the, the different way that the other language you work with fits those things together and this is a case where Greek does it differently than we do and the reason that it does is you have uh, in this case a verb of uh, cognition and the collocation rule, just to, just to say it to you, is that in Greek, verbs of communication and verbs of cognition often take their direct object in the dative. I'll say that one more time. Verbs of communication and verbs of cognition take, often take their uh, object, their direct object, in the dative. So here you have a verb of cognition, they believed. But again, what fits into this category is, you know, he responded, he answered, he told, he uh, remembered, he thought, he reminded, you know, uh, all of those kinds of verbs that uh, have something to do with communication or cognition. Um, many, many, many of them, what you will find is that their direct object is technically uh, in the dative, but that's what it's supposed to be. The difference that that makes to you is that the correct translation of these objects in this sentence is they believed the scripture and the word, not they believed in the scripture and in the word. So again, the reason is because those those nouns, those objects follow a verb of cognition and so they are in the dative because they are what are called the, a dative of direct object. So they're functioning as direct object even though they're in a dative. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. If you have any issues with that, let me know, um, and I can I can you know walk it through with you some other way. Uh, all right. So they believed the scripture and the word, and then you have your relative clause. So in this case, I, I didn't pull it apart. It wasn't in the middle, so I didn't pull it apart for you. No need to. Um, again, what you find is you yank the relative clause. The sentence still makes perfect sense without it. They believe the scripture and the word. That makes perfect sense. So knowing that, then we can treat the relative clause as its own animal. Uh, you have a witch, and then you have apen, which you learned as uh, spoke or something like that, uh, or said. So, um, in this case, you know, Jesus, of course, and you see that Jesus is a subject, so that should be clear enough. So, which Jesus spoke or said. So, in this particular instance, you're going to say, okay, I, I can get the sentence. They believe the, the scripture and the word which Jesus spoke. That's good enough, but you really need to think through, and again, what, what you really need to think through what that relative pronoun is doing because that's going to make the big difference in Greek to help you understand how the sentence fits together. Once again, relative pronoun, case, number, gender. Case, you look right. Number, gender, you look left to the uh, antecedent that it's modifying. Now, which Jesus spoke, you know, again, um, you look at Han, you know that it's accusative, you know that it's singular, you know that it's masculine. So you, you look for number, gender, and you say masculine singular, well, what's the antecedent? Uh, well, the 
other masculine singular noun that you have before it is uh, lagos. Uh, while it's in a different case, the idea there is you know that the re the vocabulary word is lagos, which is a masculine singular uh, thing. So and in, in this sentence as to lag lago, it is singular. So you've got the singular masculine thing when you point at lagos. So um, you're done with that. You figured that out. And then to say, well, okay, how does it fit into the relative clause? Well, if the word, the, the word is what's being embedded in the relative clause. Well, is it, um, we know that it's accusative, so we know that it's functioning as the direct object. Does it make sense that way? Jesus spoke the word. Absolutely. It fits perfectly. So you know that it's the case is accusative because it's replacing the direct object within the relative clause, which is what we see it doing uh, if we reinsert it, sort of. Uh, Jesus spoke the word. Uh, it's a done deal. So hopefully, again, they believe the scripture and the word which Jesus spoke. That should be perfect.